In this video, I'm going to talk about identifying parent functions uh, to model data sets. Okay, so again, identifying parent functions to model data sets. Basically, what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a data set, taking some coordinates, plotting them, and then seeing what turns up. What what kind of what kind of parent function does this look like? Is it going to be is it going to be a cubic function? Is it going to be a constant? Uh, function is it going to be a a linear function? Is it? I mean, there's a bunch of different parent functions that we have. Okay, so we're going to see, we're going to graph this. We're going to see what it looks like. So again, graph the data set which we have down here from uh, the set of ordered pairs. Describe the parent function and the transformation that best approximate the data set. So not only are we going to identify the parent function itself, we're we're going to identify how it looks differently from the original parent function. Okay, so we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to graph the data set. Not too, not too troublesome. Now, as I look at this data set, I want to look at some of my bigger numbers. So two negative twelve, or excuse me, negative two twelve, and then two twelve. Um, twelve is kind of a big number, and as I look at my graph here, um, I don't have a lot of space. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to change the I'm going to change the, um, the number that my graph goes up and down by. Now, I'm going to do that not for the x coordinates, but I'm going to do that for the y coordinates. So on my y axis, I'm going to go up and down by 2s or 3s or 4s or something like that. Okay? Now, as I see here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so I might want, if I go by 2s, it would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, which still doesn't get me to 12. So instead, I'm going to go by 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Okay, so that will actually get me, so I can actually graph this 212 here. So again, I'm going to go by 3. So I got 3, 6, 9, 12, and then that's, that's it. I'm, I'm not going to change my x-axis, because I'm with my x's, I'm going negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So I, there's no need for me to change the x-axis. Only the y-axis is giving me trouble. Okay, so I'm going to graph this. It's going to be negative 2, and then 12, which is all the way up here. And then I'm going to have negative 1, 3. So negative 1, 3 right here. Kind of getting in the way of the 3 there. 0, 0 right there at the origin. Right there at the origin. 1, 3. So 1, 1, 2. Oh, got to be careful. Got to be careful. If I change the increments, I don't. I go up by 3. It's not up by 1. So I almost made that mistake. And then I got 2, 12. So 1, 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's handy to put those numbers right there on the side so you can see them as you're graphing. All right, so now, as I look at this, as I look at this, what, pa what parent function does that look like? Well, we're going to have to connect the dots before we can see that. So we start at 0, 0. I'm going to come up here, little arrow. I'm going to start at my 0, 0. I'm going to come up here with my arrow. As I look at that, that looks like a curve. That looks like a smiley face. So that's going to be a quadratic function. Okay. So again, I want to describe the parent function. So I've already done that. This is going to be quadratic. Quadratic. Looks like a quadratic function where everything's curving up into kind of a smiley face. And now what I want to do is I want to, and then also describe the transformation that best approximate the data set. Well. Basically, what that's saying is, how, how is it different from the original parent function? How is it different from the original quadratic? Well, what we would need to do is we need to graph the original to see kind of how they differ. Like, is it, and especially with changing our increments right here, is it, has, has, this, has this gotten bigger, smaller, scrunched, widened? Like, what, what, is it, what, has, done, what has been done to this? So what we're going to do is I'm going to graph the parent function on this other side here. Uh, let me use a different color. Okay, so I'm going to graph the parent function. Now, this is where a good knowledge of the parent function, this is where knowing the coordinates is going to be really, really handy. Um, for, the, for the parent function, I'm going to write this in red. I'm just going to write the coordinates over here. If I, if I plug in a negative 2, so I'm, I'm kind of going to plug in these same x coordinates. If I plug in a negative 2 into my original parent function, which is just x squared, if I plug in a negative 2, that's going to give me 4. If I plug in a negative 1, that's going to give me 1. Okay, so if I, again, if I plug in negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. If I plug in a negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. If I plug in a 0, 0 squared is 0. If I plug in a, if I plug in a 1, 1 squared is 1. And if I plug in a 2, 
2 squared is 4. So what I just very did, quickly did is came up with a bunch of coordinates that um, are going to be used to graph this. So now I'm going to graph those real quick. So negative 2 and then 4, which is about right here. Okay, 3, 4, remember my increments are different. And then negative 1, negative 1, which is about right here. 0, 0, which is right there. So it looks like that they share that coordinate. And then I'm going to have 1, 1, so 1, 1. And I'm going to have 2, 4, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, right about there. Now I'm going to draw this in red. Okay, so the blue one, the blue one is the data, the red one is my parent. So this is the parent, this is the parent. And if you can't keep track of either of them, you might want to do what I'm doing here. You might want to write, um, you might want to write what they are. So that, there's the parent one, and this one's going to be the data. This one's going to be the data. Okay, so now, now we can more accurately, now that we can actually see it, now we can actually say, okay, describe the transformation. Describe the transformation. Okay, well, what I'm going to say is, well, it looks like it got, looks like it got a lot taller, or you could also say that everything's been compressed. Every, all the, all, everything's been kind of compressed in. So there's two ways you can describe this. You can say it either got taller, which now if we get to the technical terminology, if you make something taller, you are vertically stretching it, vertical stretch. Or you could also say, well, everything came in, it kind of compressed everything. You could also say this is a horizontal compression. So there's actually two, there's actually two descriptions we could have for this, and either one of them would be correct. Either one of them would be correct. Um, we, you could either say, uh, what did I say, uh, vertical stretch. I could say vertical vertical stretch, or you could also say, this could be a separate, uh, this, this one would also be valid, you could also say horizontal, horizontal, I forgot my, can't spell horizontal correctly, horizontal, there we go, horizontal compression. Horizontal compression. Okay, so there's two ways you could have described this. And again, either one of those would be correct. Now, as I look at my points, there's one of them that I would use above the other. Okay, so now look at if you look at the points themselves, notice that here, okay, here's the red, here's the parent function. Everything went up. This point went up. This point stayed there. This, this point here went up. This point here went up. That would lead one to believe that actually a vertical stretch, this thing was stretched vertically up, that might be a better description of what kind of transformation this was. Now, again, depending, depending on how picky your, your, your instructor wants to be, uh, it doesn't really, I, I would think it doesn't really matter which, which one you use to describe it, but I, th I think both of them are valid. But if you really want to be picky, it looks like these points went up points went up. If the points go up like that, it would be a vertical stretch. So a vertical stretch may be a better description of what happened. But I would also say that horizontal compression still has a good argument also because everything, everything came in, came in to get kind of a narrower type of graph. All right. Um, that's, a, that's a quick video, a quick example of using a data set to kind of model a parent function, identifying the parent function and then identifying the transformation, describing the parent transformation from the parent function to the data set.